I thought Mystic needed some <coughs> industry to support the town. And I made these structures, and I thought, wow, that's, it, it just overwhelms it. I, I just keep one. So I, had, I got rid of that one because it was just too much stuff. Next one, please. When I did that, then this the road bed was exp exposed and broken plaster and stuff. So I had to put some plaster in. Next one, please. So this this is the this is the um, result. So next one, please. I decided to make a like a powerhouse for the the Appleman Woodworks, and this is just a two-piece piece of uh, cardboard to put together. Next one, please. And I streaked it, and I put a, a brass tubing on there, a couple of guy wires to keep it erect, and it's nothing more. That's all all there is to it. Next one, please. This is one of the fool the eye techniques. This is a branch with some foliage on it. And next one, please. That hides the fact that this roof is actually going underneath the scenery right in here. You can't see it. This helps, too, to create distance between the, the roof and the scenery. So you can use these things to your, your own benefit. It implies that there's a tree back there, but there isn't, of course. Next one, please. Apple, Apple was made with cap siding, and I used end scale windows for the for the structure because it, a structure like this needs small windows, and and the old H O scale ones were just a little bit too big. I put some stonework around the foundation. Next one, please. Now I painted the all the windows apart, of course, airbrushed them. I have a roll of two-sided two tape that I stretch, on a, stretch over on a piece of one by four. You can do it with one-sided tape if you want to staple it taut and, and so it's nice and flat. And just put your windows on there, it holds them nice and, and you can paint them easily. Next one, please. I rummaged around to my old uh, work box and, and I found this dust blower nothing to write home about but uh, I used uh, some angle wood for a, to hold it up in place and I put it on the back side of the the roof because I didn't want to draw attention to it next one please now here is the easiest most economical fastest way to, to create interior detail. This is a piece of cardboard, the same thing I put the floor on just a couple of sides ago. Very thin cardboard. I made a regular shape here. It could be any shape. You, could, couldn't, you didn't have to have a slanted one. You didn't have a T one. Put anything you want. And then color it with, with subdued colors. This, this wasn't painted. This was done with chalk. And you want to keep it muted. You don't want any bright colors. Next one, please. And I glued it to the support beams in the corners of Appleman, so it's about a quarter inch back from the windows. You don't want it right up against the windows. Next one, please. And now you can see something in there, but you don't know what it is. But it looks like it should be part of the machinery or part of boxes or, or something like that. And it works even, we'll see a... Uh, it, a little sh illuminated shot from Appleman's in a minute. Next one, please. Now, Amy Stills dry goods couldn't afford big plate glass windows, so she had to have made with panes. Next one, please. So I made an outline of the of the window. I used two by two styrene. I put the then I went down, held it with, with scotch tape in place, and then I cut some pieces and joined them in at three equal intervals, much like this. And then when it was dry, I, I cut them all off at the 
window sides, and I made two of those. Next one, please. And now she's got paned windows. Next one. A while ago, I bought 120 prizer figures for about 10 or 12 bucks. And in, in that set was a lot of people going to the beach. And I don't know whether the Europeans either wear the suits under their clothes and then shed their clothes when they get there or they, they change on the beach. I don't know which it is, but you find piles of clothes in the, in the set, the shoes, hats, umbrellas, all that was, was nice, nice interior detail for dry goods. And I used the mannequin here to, to draw attention to it. Next one, please. And there it is in, in uh, Kate's. That wallpaper, another pattern on my computer I used so it wouldn't have a white wall. Next one, please. Next door is the bank, and it had a wooden floor. Tables and chairs were much like I did with Kate's. I got some green pieces of paper for blotters and pieces of paper around. You notice I I put a piece of paper over, black paper over the upstairs windows. When it's open, it would only have the downstairs open. Next one, please. There we go. Let's start now. Hopefully, we'll get better. All right. We went through, through trees and foliage. This isn't really trees and foliage. This is a retaining wall for the narrow gauge. And I needed one because this area here is going to be a, a truck support for the the freight house. So and essentially it's a part of trees and foliage because made of wood to cribbing. The horizontal pieces are two by ten or so and then I put enough room to put uh, one eight square pieces in between look like cribbing. Next one please. Of course you can't see it it's just a see it a little bit there, but I know it's there. <laughs> Next one. Okay, this is my weed. And off that weed, we got all the, those other ones. Uh, you can do that. Next sign. Yeah. And what's that? Well, they, they go to a bush about this big. No, I mean... <laughs> what? What are those that you're throwing? Oh, oh, I see. Uh, they're about, about three high. Tallest one is probably about this high. Well, I can't see your hands. Give me a finger. <laughs> so, six, seven inches. Yeah. Okay. But they, they grow in a bush, and they usually grow in a place where... You're, Nothing else grows. I meant to bring a, a tree along, but I forgot. All right, next one. Here's a, a way to make a, a stand of fir trees. I wrote an article on this before. Get a, um, an old piece of window screening when you're, re, when you're pr replacing with new and use the old stuff. And uh, with tin snips, make some vertical cuts in there so that and and vary the size of the, the height of each one. Next one please. And this is what you end up with. Next one please. I go with my needle nose pliers and down in the center of each one and put a uh, and fold the screen over on each side to get a little more three dimensional look to these trees. Next one please. Then I liberally Apply Elmer's glue. Next one, please. And I put woodland scenics, foliage and grass and everything. Use the, the, the dead stuff, the, the stuff that is, don't use anything too bright. Next one, please. And this is what the trees look like. So I go one more step further. Next one. I load some Pullman Green into my airbrush and I 
put it at a low angle to get a, a, a shadow base, and then I go up once every tree to get a little shadow under, under the, the foliage. Next one, please. These are some that, that are at the, at the approach to, they're about two inches tall. You, you don't usually use them by here, but I, I did. They're at, at the approach of the narrow gauge going up the hill. Next one, please. Here, here, here is a better example of it. Notice how it blends with the backdrop, so it, it looks like it's foreground trees. And it, it's very simple, very simple to do. It doesn't require any, any dexterity to make these things. Next one, please. <laughs>